Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to learn how to paint a strawberry plant in my new botanical painting style. So grab your paints and let's get started. So we've actually got, um, I was about to say tomatoes, strawberries growing in our garden at the moment. Um, so I'm going to start with a, a sort of curved stem and off that I'm going to have a, a strawberry growing here. I'm going to have a few leaves. Um, the leaves seem to grow in threes, so I'll have a little line there. We'll have another strawberry hanging off there. And then as we go up the plant, we'll have some of the, the blossoms, the strawberry flowers. A few more leaves there. So we don't need to draw in too much of the actual sort of structure. I mean, if you want, you could sort of give yourself a rough idea of how big your strawberry is going to be. And the one here, which will be helpful, I think, for sort of the stretch of the leaves, I guess. But that's really all we need. Um, if you are drawing in pencil, then it's very, very sensible to lightly rub your pencil out to the point where it's very faint and you can barely see it because that is how um, we manage to rub out any remaining pencil when the painting is done. It's probably my most asked question is people go, how do you get rid of the pencil? Well, the, the first stage is really getting it to a bare minimum before you started painting. And on the subject of painting, I am mixing up the stem colour. So I'm going for a sort of slightly yellowy green. For me, I'm mixing green gold here and sap green. And um, my sap green is a little bit bluey greener than a lot of people's. Um, so I really do need the, the yellowy addition. You could also mix cadmium yellow in, or I also have this sort of pre-mixed thing up here, which is lemon yellow and sap green, which is just a really nice, fresh, zesty mix. It's just turned into a kind of permanent colour in my palette. Um, but then there's always a number of greens to be found in nature, and the, the strawberry leaf is actually quite a striking uh, serrated edge leaf with a quite intense colour, so I will just keep the sap green ready there, and also French ultramarine blue, just going to wake that one up as well. So get your colours ready and woken up when you are starting to paint. Of course, there is the matter of the, the strawberry colours as well. We'll come to that in a bit. We're going to actually start with leaves and stem. So I've got a size zero Pro Art Masterstroke brush, my, my old faithfuls, and I'm going to begin by just uh, painting in a fairly slender line along the stem. And it's going to get just a little bit thicker as we go down. So actually what's gonna happen is it's going to turn into two parallel lines it's a nice way to achieve uh, a sense of the roundness of a stem if you can get these two little parallel lines working. It doesn't have to be the whole time, but it's just quite nice. So that my strawberry is going to come over in front. So I'm just leaving a little gap there. And the stem is getting thicker towards the base.
go. That's looking very nice. Now just at this early stage we can add in just a little bit of sap green. Things are still sort of drying so we'll still get a few blends and things but it's quite nice to just drop in a little bit of that sap green particularly to the areas down sort of in the larger part so I'm just using it to create a, a bit of a low light on some of the undersides of things and I'm now going to take a slightly large brush I'm going to go for a size 2 and I'm going to begin to put in my leaves so we've got a central line coming out for each leaf and what I'm going to do with my size 2 brush and my sort of uh, lighter green mix is I'm going to imagine that leaf extending out I'm going to do a tapered line using the fine tip of the brush and then I'm going to repeat that. Oh, you might hear the dogs. They are making a bit of a racket at the moment. So this is a really nice simple way of creating a serrated edge leaf is that you are starting with the tip of the brush and bringing it down into the central point. I'm just going to take a little bit of sap green and I'm just dabbing it on the base there. So I'm going to do this one more time. Um, my aim is to try to not have these leaves get in each other's way too much. So you're just building up the leaf shape each time you do a little brush stroke. And then just a little bit of sap green, dab, 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 on there. Right, so I'm just going to fill in the rest of the leaves and then we'll move on to the next section. Next we're going to draw in some of the strawberry blossoms. So I'm just drawing a little circle, just a, a few millimetres away from the edge of where the stem hits there. And I want to mix up a, a, a white flower colour. And the way I do that is by mixing a very, very dilute shadow mix. So picking up some burnt sienna, some Payne's grey, adding plenty of water and also just adding a, a dash of that greeny colour I've been using just to keep everything tied in together and honestly that will that will do the trick it's going to go on the page very um, pale and translucent and it might be quite hard to even see but trust me it's there right so we've got a, a five petaled flower so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in a sort of, it's almost like a strawberry shape itself I suppose. I'm going to paint in two here, so we've got a gap, then we've got one here, just leaving a tiny bit of unpainted space just to add a bit of interest, and then a third one just on the other side here. trying not to let them touch too much, those two down there. We'll paint in these ones here and then we'll let them dry and paint in the next layer. So these petals have dried so I've just painted in the other two and I will paint those in here as well. The idea is is that they translucently overlap each other 
And so we just get to see just a nice little detail of that, those crisp little white petals. Okay, so whilst we let those dry, we can focus our attention on the strawberries. I've just drawn a few of the sepals in, in pencil. Um, and of course we need a lovely red color for our strawberries. Um, and I've got cadmium red here, which is lovely, but we always need uh, some extra sort of light and shade. Alizar and Crimson is perfect to just create a little bit of deep richness to the strawberry colour. But also I want to do this one where it's sort of partially ready, it's not quite there yet. Um, so we're actually going to use a bit of this blossom colour with just a little bit of extra of the green. So what I'm going to do with my size 2 brush, I don't want too much colour on there, that's quite a lot actually. Take that off. I'm going to Paint in the bottom. And then I'm going to take a bit of red. Quite dilute red. And I'm just first focusing on getting the crisp edges there. And now I'm just going to very gently work it down so that it hits the green and we're just going to leave it like that in, on the blend but I am going to add a few dabs more of slightly more concentrated cadmium red just at the top There we go, it will start to creep down. And then just a teeny, tiny, weeny bit. You can barely notice it, but it does help. Alizar and Crimson. And then this one down here, we're going to paint a proper red. Now, you do get a lovely shine on strawberries. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start with a fairly dilute cadmium red. And I'm going to find a sort of a point where the shine really hits. So that little bit there we're leaving completely unpainted. And we're just building up the red around it. start bringing in a bit more a bit more color just from the edges working my way in I'm still using a fairly it's not that concentrated it's it's strong but it's it's really not that concentrate okay that's really nice and the colour will just sort of gradually creep in. But what I also want to do is, is get some nice Alizar and Crimson. Just on the sort of two edges there. And then you can just use it if you need to even up the shape of your strawberry. It's very tempting to sort of poke around with that. Um, you just got to try not to she says as she pokes around with it I just want to soften that lovely okay so we're going to leave those strawberries to dry and our flowers up here are looking quite good so we can have a look at the centers of those so we need a bit of stuff in my cadmium yellow need some cadmium yellow and I actually think my uh, my mixture here will also be rather nice I'm going to take a, a small brush, I'm going to take my four tenths brush, which is my smallest one in my regular set. And I'm going to use that circle to dot around the edge. 
quite messily. I'm using the cadmium yellow in a quite a concentrated manner. It's a very, uh, it's quite an opaque paint, cadmium yellow. Anything with cadmium in the title is quite opaque. And now I'm going to hit some of that green and just get a few of those little dots. More sort of on the underside, I'm almost using the green got a fluff on the end of my brush. Oops. Using that green as a bit of a shadow. Okay. Other things we can be doing whilst we wait for the for the strawberries to really dry is a little bit of leaf detail. Um, they are heavily lined, these leaves, and um, it's always a bit scary to place in leaf lines when you've, you've done some really beautiful leaves and you're like, I just want to leave them, but actually we can use uh, a very handy brush called a rigger brush which is actually one I sell in my shop these days and I'm just going to wander off to get it. Here it is, this is a wicked little brush. Um, long slender bristles mean that we can do really nice, really nice delicate lines. That don't look too sort of heavy or laboured. So. just from that central line can just use a little bit of this sap green it's just so light and delicate I think it's been a bit of a game changer for me because I don't really like putting in lots of leaf detail I always used to think it would ruin whatever I'd done because I'd be a bit heavy handed with whatever you know, thin brush I had. But having the length of these bristles just allows you to do these beautiful fine lines. Those leaf lines look really lovely. And now I'm just filling in section by section, just the little sepals on the tops of the strawberries using the um, green gold mix and a bit of the sap green and that's looking nice so the, the one thing that a lot of people struggle with I think is the the seeds on a on a strawberry um, they're actually quite yellowy on well if you actually have a closer look at the strawberry so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a bit of yellow ochre woken up and I'm going to mix it in with a bit of the actual strawberry red colour. It's quite dry in my palette, so I'm just mixing that up there. So we're just getting a, a slightly sort of ready brown colour, which I'm going to use. You want to really think about how the strawberry is a rounded shape and this one is sort of angled upwards you can see that whereas that one is a, just a little bit more flat. I'm also going to add a little bit of alizarin and crimson in there. I'm using my four tenths brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the in the middle and paint a sort of, it's almost like a semi-circle, isn't it, of the strawberry seeds. And then in the gaps, a 
apparently a strawberry is the only fruit with the seeds on the outside and I learned that from watching an episode of the West Wing. <laughs> So just keep going until you start to get towards the bottom and at that point your seeds will also just start to shrink a little bit so I'm now doing them just as little dabs less of a, a, a sort of unpainted space As they get towards the bottom, they're going to be just a bit more tightly packed. And then you can just continue in the areas you haven't done yet. So you can see on this strawberry that the colour of the seeds sort of reflected the colour of the strawberry. So they're greeny here and they go into red. But the last bits and pieces for this is we need to add a little bit of extra detail into the seeds just to really make them stand out. So I've got some shadow here and I'm just adding a tiny sort of accent to some down the side. And just a, a little bit on here as well. And then I'm also going to take a bit more of the actual sort of grey shadow mix and just dab some onto the underside. There. And also, taking my size zero brush and really diluting down that shadow, really diluting it down, maybe taking on a little bit of the, of the colour there, is just one or two lines just to give it those flowers just a little bit something extra it doesn't matter if in fact it's a good thing if you're picking up some of the color from that center okay so a little bit of shadow a little bit of detail here and there um, I'm going to take my size two tenths brush get a bit of blue and shadow into that blue green shadow into the shadow mix because we're going to add a bit of detail to the stem And in fact, you might just want to add a, a sepal here or there, or a little bract. these little details that really make all the difference for those final touches and uh, if you wanted you could add a few little leaf lines on the top here you know me I get to this point and I just start to see all sorts of things I want to add you, you also do need to uh, understand where to where to stop 
But if you're enjoying yourself, well, who am I to tell you to stop? So the last thing for me is just a little bit of regular shadow. Just a, just a hint, nothing too much. And there we have a lovely strawberry plant. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to each and every one of my patrons because their support enables us to keep creating the videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed this, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if you're sharing your work on social media, then tag us at De Winton Paper Co on Instagram. And if you never want to miss another video, then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell next to it. And we'll see you again again next time.